This is the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. Abundant sunshine, plentiful irrigation water, a rich volcanic soil, and skilled producers have combined to make this region world renowned as home to some of the finest hops in the world. It's a tradition, more than merely an industry, that preserves this well-deserved reputation for quality and variety. Many of the world's largest breweries turn to the U.S. hop industry for consistent excellence and dependability. They know that when quality cannot be compromised, they can count on the American hop growers. The Northwest states of Idaho, Washington, and Oregon offer similarly ideal climates and resources for hop production. Most of the world's supply of alpha hops and a substantial portion of the aroma variety are produced in this tri-state region. Generations of know-how and innovation go into each new crop. It's a proud industry built by dedicated families and their skilled employees. A permanent commitment to produce better hops and to meet the specific requirements of brewers worldwide fuels extensive ongoing private and university level research. Pioneer hop farming began nearly a century ago in the northwestern United States. The length of the growing season, plenty of sunshine, the availability of dependable precipitation, and abundant annual runoff from the nearby mountains convinced early growers that this was the ideal place to grow hops and expect high yields. Since those initial crops were harvested, modern technology and hard work have for cultural enterprises. Skilled farm management has kept production costs down while implementing improved methods for fertilization, cultivation, irrigation, and pest control, resulting in ever greater yields and the highest possible quality. Management specialists, experts in the disciplines of state-of-the-art farming, as well as sound business practices, maintain high productivity in this computer age. Producing hops is a labor-intensive enterprise requiring approximately one laborer for every six to eight hectares in the spring months and double that at harvest time. The average 100 hectare hop farm employs about 15 to 20 laborers and many more for the harvest. A skilled labor force has traditionally been available to producers. Establishing a hop yard requires a large investment for building the trellis and planting rootstock. The trellis is suspended over the yard by about 135 poles per hectare, connected by high quality wire and cabling that stands five meters above the surface. Hop rootstocks are generally separated on a two meter by two meter spacing grid, planted in hills. Alternative spacing of one meter by three and a half meters has enjoyed success as have new innovations such as low trellis yards. Hop rootstocks will produce hops for many years. Some hops have reached 50 years, but hop hills are replanted with quality rootstock approximately every nine to 10 years to preserve optimum yields. Every year in the spring, soil samples are taken from each hop yard to determine fertility. These samples are analyzed and specific fertilization programs are developed for each hop yard balancing nutrients to ensure the highest quality and yields. American hop growers produce a wide variety of hops. Alpha hops have traditionally been the primary variety grown, but in recent years, aroma varieties have steadily increased in production. Alpha varieties include the Galena, Nugget, Chinook, and Cluster varieties. Aroma varieties include Cascade, Willamette, Liberty, and Mount Hood. American hop growers have diversified to meet brewer demands, and research continues on further development of hop varieties toward future market applications. In late March, pruning with tractor-drawn mechanical pruners takes place to prepare the hop plants for a proper training time. Old dry vines and debris are removed. 
A couple of weeks later, twine is stretched from the overhead trellis network to the ground to provide support for growing hop vines. During the month of May, hop plants are trained to climb the vine supports. Usually two or three shoots are wrapped in a clockwise direction around the twine to begin their journey to the top of the trellis. Excess shoot growth from hills is controlled by stripping leaves and shoots from the main vine. By late May or early June, as determined by weather conditions, irrigation of the hop fields will begin. During a normal growing season, the hop field will require 50 to 75 centimeters of water. Rill, sprinkler gun, or trickle irrigation methods are used. Cultivation takes place in each hop row four to six times in each direction during a normal growing season with the earliest cultivation taking place in early April, after the soil has dried from winter precipitation. Regular cultivation provides weed control and improves soil texture, maximizing a quality crop. Final cultivation usually takes place in late June or early July, as the fibrous root system of the plant is being developed. To protect the root system, no additional cultivation takes place until after harvest. Downy mildew and certain virus diseases can attack hop crops and must be dealt with each season with various cultural practices that will control diseases. American hop growers are committed to the development of virus-free rootstock and their substantial investment in technology and research is producing encouraging results. Major threats to hops include the hop aphid and the two-spotted spider mite. Wherever possible, natural methods of pest control are employed, supplemented with plant protection products when necessary. Harvest begins by mid-August, lasting as much as a month. It is a very busy time when farm crews double in size, sometimes working around the clock. Hop vines are first cut about one meter above the ground and then are cut from the overhead support wires. The hop laden vines fall into the truck beds or trailers which transport them to picking machines located nearby. Typical picking machines can pick three to six hectares of hops depending on variety and operating time per day. Hop vines enter the picking machine at the feeding station where vines are hung upside down. Hops and leaves are stripped from the vines which pass through the picking machine to the back of the system where they drop into a chopper and are turned into a mulch to be returned to the soil. Leaves and hops fall through a traveling wire mesh and onto a conveyor which takes them through a series of cleaning devices that remove the leaves and stems from the hop cones. Stems and leaves eventually are conveyed to trash while the hops are cleaned and recleaned by a network of screens, drums, and dribble belts until the hops, free of stems and leaves, fall onto the clean hops conveyor for a trip to the hops kilns.